Yeah, I think fundamentally, SaaS broke its promise to enterprise customers and to businesses globally, right? Because if you think about the evolution from on-premise to cloud, the promise was supposed to be better for lesser, right? Or more for lesser which is, uh, if you think about any business process, whether this is hire to retire, or it is you know, procure to pay, or it is order to cash, any business process, um, there is a trifecta of costs, and therefore a trifecta of productivity. There is the underlying spend, whether that is sales spend, marketing spend, hiring spend, or talent spend, supply chain spend, etc. right? The underlying spend itself. And then there is labor cost or headcount spent, right? Where you have teams and people that are working on that particular process. And then there's technology spent, right? Uh, which is tools and you know all of the technology that supports that process. Uh, what SaaS and cloud was supposed to do was actually the promise was that we would reduce all three and we will improve what you get from all three investments, whether that is the underlying spend, whether that is the headcount spend in terms of productivity, or it is the spend on tools and, and, and services, right? Uh, you know, at best, what SaaS did was recategorize these spends. Uh, what they were spending on uh, on-premise uh, solutions moved to cloud, that became CapEx to OpEx. Uh, the underlying spend oftentimes did not dramatically improve, it was cost avoidance. And you know, the, the spend on headcount oftentimes actually increased when you had massive teams that were managing technology rather than you know, improved productivity resulting in reduced headcount or more effective use of headcount itself, right? Uh, and so I think over time, the proliferation of too many tools, too many teams, too many broken processes, et cetera, meant that people were subservient to the tech rather than the tech serving the teams and the people themselves. I think with agentic AI, there is a clear shift. Uh, and you know the way I see it, uh, AI really is the next internet or the next cloud moment in the supply chain software revolution uh, and more broadly in the enterprise software landscape itself, right? And uh, there are certain functions and processes that caught on to the cloud wave for whom the AI wave is the next generation of movement, but there are certain functions and processes that were left behind in the cloud uh, era, and for them, the AI era is a leapfrog. Uh, you're seeing procurement being one of those spaces, supply chain being one of those sp uh, spaces, um, support being one of those spaces, etc. where you know they were late adopters of technology uh, in supply chain or procurement, and they're now leapfrogging forward in terms of uh, agentic AI adoption. And that's where you'll see significant unlocks, not just of productivity, but of new ways of doing business, right? Um, there will be, you know, the, 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 the AI spend will not just eat into or deliver value for technology spend, it will also deliver value for headcount spend, and it will deliver value for the underlying, you know, productivity of the, of the investment in the, in the logistics or supply chain spend itself. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, the trade-off that uh, supply chain teams are making today, whether it's when it comes to procurement, transport management, um, you know, accounts payable for freight, et cetera, or any process across the board, whether it's planning, execution, and so on, is, you know, you have a choice. You're at a crossroads where you're saying, hey, should I give up control and outsource my process and give it to quote-unquote experts, or uh, should I keep it in-house, staff my team, uh, and try to bring efficiencies through technology? Uh, now, there are pros and cons to both of these, right? When you outsource, you're losing control, um, you reduce agility, uh, and if you want to make business changes, or when there are changes in business, supply chain can't react fast enough because a lot of these processes are external to your business. But the pros are that these are experts. These are people that know how to procure, how to run transportation, how to plan, how to execute, how to pay, etc. They have relationships. So there is expertise, there is network, and there is scale. They're not doing this just for you, they're doing this for hundreds of other shippers or carriers just like you. Right? So there are pros and cons to the outsourcing argument. 
The flip side is there are pros and cons to the technology and insourcing argument as well, which is you keep it in-house, there's going to be a higher headcount, there's potentially going to be lower productivity, there's going to be investments and implementation required in technology, but the flip is you retain control. You have agility, you can change things around fast because you know it, you're building a competence within the business itself. Um, and over time, if you're large enough, you also have economies of scale. Uh, there is no margin that you're building into the business. You're talking directly to your suppliers and you're negotiating directly. Uh, you're able to control service levels. You're able to control cost and the overall experience for your customers or suppliers. Right? So it is a clear trade-off, black or white, but there are pros and cons to both. I think with AI, what's happening is that uh, this choice is becoming more blurry. Right? If the best case scenario for any team is that I'm able to keep my process in-house, I'm able to control the process, I'm able to be agile in the way I operate, but at the same time, I don't need more people. In fact, can I do it with lesser people? Um, can, I, can my people focus on more strategic decisions? Can the execution be automated to the point where carrier negotiations or you know, claims management or planning or procurement can be completely automated, including the collaboration with these carriers? Can I build expertise without having the experts in-house, right? The classic question of what if I had a Georgia, Tech's, a Georgia Tech Ops Research graduate and a team of them as analysts on my team that can procure better, plan better, execute better and pay better? How cool would that be, except my CFO wouldn't give me the budget for it. Uh, but if there was a best of both worlds where I could keep it in-house, but at the same time, you know, it doesn't you know, uh, suboptimally impact my, my productivity or my overall ROI, that would be ideal. With AI, now that's possible. I think what generative AI and agentic tech is able to do is, you know, you're able to get the same benefit of expertise, networks, and economies of scale, while at the same time retaining the operation within the business and retaining control, um, and essentially hiring AI employees or outsourcing to AI teams rather than outsourcing to a managed services provider who's sitting in Poland or in India, uh, halfway across the world, right? So I think what AI is able to do is really marry the best of both of these worlds, um, decouple the downside of both of these worlds, and really present a optimal solution that's not too hot, not too cold, but just right for your business. You know, with Pando, we are having a very exciting journey. Uh, you know, I'll talk about Pando's journey with AI agents in two respects. One is, you know, uh, inside out from our products perspective, but first and more importantly, outside in from what we're seeing from our customers and in the market. We recently did a study. We took a bunch of our customers and went down to the users of TMS solutions, uh, who are logistics teams ultimately. These were logistics managers, logistics analysts, freight procurement specialists, freight audit and payment analysts, etc. And we said, okay, you know, Pando's automated a bunch of stuff for you, or your existing TMS has automated a bunch of stuff for you. Can you talk to us about, on a daily basis, what are the set of activities that you do outside Pando? Right? What are the set of activities, you know, your daily job? Can you describe those aspects for us? Everything that they describe, we could categorize into two buckets. The first bucket was a set of strategic decisions. These were uh, decisions around where do I source from? Uh, what is the kind of supplier loyalty I want to build? Uh, how do I improve my customer service levels, etc. Right? Um, and then there was a second set of activities, which were what I call uh, keep the lights on kind of activities, right? These were a carrier is emailing us saying his invoice is not yet paid and I have to respond to him. Or a supplier is writing in asking us, you know, or telling us that, uh, you know, an advance shipment notice is being sent saying material is ready for pickup. Oftentimes, a lot of this information was available within the business, sometimes sitting in different parts of the business in different technology solutions. What the logistics team was doing was really looking at all of this information, maybe doing some analysis and responding to each of these folks individually, right? Uh, interestingly, the first bucket, which delivered the most amount of top line and bottom line dollar value for the business that they served, they spent about 15 to 20% of time on 
80% of their time was spent firefighting these keep the lights on sort of decisions and collaboration and communication and, and discussions across the board. So many people's time is being spent on activities that one, they don't enjoy doing, two, they don't think is productive use of their time, and three, doesn't deliver significant value to the business, but four, at the same time, without doing which the business will not run, there is something off here, all right? And so we went back to these customers and said, how can I automate that 80% of your time that you're keeping the lights on? The critical activities, but uh, that have important outcomes, but are actually just daily drudgery to do, all right? Now, Pando's journey with AI has been fascinating because we started before uh, GPT-2 was around, before AI became talk of town, before agentic tech was, um, you know, word a word that was thrown around. Um, but, you know, when we started Pando, our fundamental thesis was logistics and supply chain are evolving dramatically fast and the world is changing with how supply chains are wired. And at the same time, Technology is evolving fast. AI is the next internet. At the intersection of technology and logistics, I think a substantially new, fresh product can be built and a substantially large global business can be built, right? Now, uh, when we started Pando, a lot of uh, the AI that we used were models and algorithms that were in the background, right? These were either at the system of record level or at the uh, or you know automation that was happening through machine learning algorithms or uh, better predictive algorithms etc that was automating specific tasks that were harder to be automated in terms of business decision making for instance one of our early products optima which was a, a planning and optimization engine leveraged substantial proprietary machine learning algorithms to be, to better plan shipments we would take in and ingest procurement orders or purchase orders and sales orders uh, of customers and then convert those into shipment orders and you know collaborate with carriers to better execute those shipments where we had to choose what mode of freight one had to pick what where would it be dispatched from uh, you know what even within let's say an FTL load or a, a parcel load or an air freight load what specific asset type do we have to use what would how do I maximize the utilization how do I club multiple loads and route it effectively etc and we took this parallel optimization route by analyzing past data and predicting what the most effective, uh, not just cost would be, but the most executable plan would be to maximize the SLAs for our customers, right? Uh, but as we evolved and as the product roadmap evolved, what we actually did was moved that AI usage, not just from in the back end as we were using it, but to the foreground, right? In collaboration in generative AI use cases for um, you know, document analysis and generation and, and, and automation of workflows, et cetera. Um, and so more and more from the system of record to business logic and automation, Pando is, uh, Pando's AI usage is evolving towards um, you know, a system of intelligent engagement and collaboration, which is, you know, collaborating with third parties and becoming an expert, not just using your own business's data, but by leveraging the larger network of data, both within all of the network of customers that Pando has, but also the larger ecosystem of weather data, third party data, uh, supply chain uh, data, news, et cetera, across the board, aggregating all of these third party uh, and multi enterprise data sets to be able to better every transaction and every workflow and every collaboration. I think we're at a pivotal moment in supply chain where not just, and, and supply chain is a unique beast where it's ultimately uh, because of the amount of digitization we have seen in the last 15 years, there is a lot of digital data sets available. But at the same time, supply chain is also a unique beast because all of these digital data sets are in silos. Right. You have visibility data sitting inside your visibility providers database. You have transaction data sitting inside your TMS. You have PO and SO data sitting in your ERP. 
you have uh, you know benchmark data sitting inside a third party resource you have weather data sitting somewhere else um, you have asn data sitting somewhere else etc so i think when you bring all of these pieces together and then corroborate it with the larger data sets that are either multi enterprise data or third party data you get this network of data that you can learn from and then when you apply uh, generative ai on top of it the agentic framework around leveraging llms to have dynamic workflows where you choose whether you go down path a path b or path c that are not definitive uh, that are more dynamic and context specific the way humans collaborate the way humans make decisions um, and communicate i think it gives you a rich set of use cases that we're able to leverage to deliver significant value with customers the way we approach this roadmap is in deep collaboration with our customers um, we launch agents and you know workflow automations templates for uh, these workflows etc on a regular basis automating very specific um, but uh, you know multi multi modal usage of these of these agents in terms of whether that is you know pro, agents for procurement automation agents for planning automation agents for payments automation claims management service level uh, improvements and customer service around the supply chain itself etc uh, and as we move forward into the next couple of years we're seeing this blurring the lines between the different categories of supply chain software where does TMS end and where does yard management begin? Where does yard management end and visibility begin? Where does in transit visibility end and documentation management begin? Where does that end and freight payment and audit begin? Where does supply chain planning end and supply chain execution begin? When you look at all of these as ultimately data sets that you can combine to automate processes, then you know supply chain becomes one big uh, you know, significant problem to solve uh, for one big significant team within the business. Uh, and our goal is to ultimately become uh, the right hand of the supply chain leader uh, and really be that, uh, you know, ops research team uh, that you can leverage for freight procurement, for supply chain planning, for execution, for payment, anything across the procure to pay process within supply chain itself. And that's where we see agentic AI playing a big role in the Pando ecosystem.